This conference will now be recorded. It, let's start today's session. In the last session, we discussed about exception handling mechanism. So in that we have seen built-in exceptions or predefined exception classes. And if user don't satisfy with the built-in exceptions or user-defined exception classes, then as a programmer, we can create our own exception classes. So that is called user-defined exceptions or customized exceptions. Today we'll see user-defined exceptions, user-defined or customized exceptions, customized exceptions. To create your own exception class, we need to create separate class. And that class, how it will become an exception class means that class should extend from the uh, super class of exception that is called exception only. So we have to create a class and that class should inherit it from super class. Then only your class is going to become a exception class. Okay. So otherwise it will not become an exception class so how to prepare our own exception class like customized exception classes we'll see now and generally built uh, built-in exceptions or predefined exceptions will raise automatically so no need to raise as a programmer so the moment when if invalid inputs or any some problem occur during the program execution time all built-in exceptions will be raised automatically because that are system defined exceptions but when we are talking about user defined or customized exceptions these exception classes are going to create by user or programmer so python will not take any responsible for user defined exceptions or customized exceptions you only need to create exception files and you only need to raise those exceptions according to your program okay let's see this how to create our own exception files and how to raise that exceptions clearly we'll see that okay so to create an exception class we have to create class so class name your class name it is your class should be inherited or extended from super class that is exception only so normally this class is your class name this class how it will become an exception class it should extend or inherit from supra class only that is exception class only then only it will be uh, what we can say create a new class from this exception class fine now after that here df underscore underscore init underscore underscore of self comma arcs i am taking this is constructor so I have to initialize the message. So that's what self dot msg equals to args I'm assigning. So this is exactly how we can create our own exception class, which is inherited from exceptions clearly, sir. Okay. So this is fine. Let's see this. Yeah. Let's see an example here. For example, I'm taking according to my program. I need to prepare my own exception classes. So here exception classes means let's go to example. This example I'm showing. Yes. In this example. First, I am ready. I, I am just uh, create few exception class. I'm taking two end exception. To end exception is my class name. It should be inherited from super class. It's my class name here. Two end exception. Def underscore underscore init self comma args arguments alpha dot message equals to args this is one exception classes i'm ready with this class like this you can include any number of exception classes as you own two old exception i'm preparing 
to old exception and it should be inherited from exception class ef underscore underscore init print so i'm using sorry self dot message equals to args so we have to supply here args in the constructor only you are ready with two exception classes one is two eng exception then next one is two old exception clearly okay yes two eng exception and two old exception here these two classes are available you can raise these two exception classes into your program according to your requirement but as i said that once you create your own exception classes or customized exception classes python do not take any responsible to handle this so we need to raise these exceptions and we need to handle these exceptions clearly sir okay we need to raise these exceptions and we need to handle these exceptions how to raise these exceptions we'll see now so according to our program suppose i'm accepting age from the user input so input enter your age only enter your age age equals to int of input of enter your age only if age okay if age so look at this i'm trying to give this if age greater than or equals to 60 i can say by raising the exception you know how to raise the exception in python to raise the exception in python we use what keyword raise keyword generally same thing in other languages if they want to raise the exceptions they'll use throw keyword like in c uh, c shop .net or java other language programmers they use throw keyword but in python we use what keyword raise keyword is greater than or equal to 60 then i want to raise the exception already i have exception class that is called two old exception classes there this class through i can say message what message age should not be 60 or more i can say that it should not be 60 or more this is two old exception class i'm using okay elif age less than or equals to okay example 16 and i can say rage one more exception i am using to eng exception so age should not be 16 or below i can say that else if user entered age between 16 and 60 then i can say that you are eligible to take policy or any message you can give this <coughs> okay so this is my code sir i have two exception classes with us this is my own exception classes these exception classes are become exception classes only because these are inherited from super class i am accepting age from the user if age is greater than or equal to 60 if this condition is true i have to raise the exception by using raise keyword and i need to say the message also or age should not be 60 or more else if age is less than or equal to 16 i have to raise one more exception raise to eng exception age should not be 16 or below else i can say print you are eligible to take policy only okay fine but this program is going to demonstrate only how to create our own exception classes and how to raise them only not handle we have not handled the exception we just prepare our own exception classes and we are raising that exception classes into this program according to our requirement i will show you how to handle this also let's run this first execute this one and now you can see enter your age suppose i am entering the age is 89 the moment when we enter the age now you can see this in the red color we are noticing that our exceptions raised two old exception 
age should not be 60 or more now you can see this exception class only raising at line number 30 how normal built-in exceptions or uh, system defined exceptions will give exception messages in red color that is also same let's rerun this again age is below 16 i'm entering 15. now you can see this we got another exception what we have include in the program that is called to young exception age should not be 16 or below so age should not be 16 or below we got this exception clearly if you give proper age for example age is bit below 60 and above 16 means so you are eligible to take policy like this we are getting sir you are eligible to take policies are clear got my point so this is perfect so if you enter wrong value then only it will it will be uh, what we can say uh, problem actually okay so these are the exceptions are raised how to handle these exceptions now so as you know that according to exception rules and regulations this is totally what codes are risky code risky code means what there is a possibility okay this is called risky code so risky code there is a possibility to get an exception in this code that is called risky code this risky code okay so let me copy this and this risky code we should keep inside the try block only let's handle this exception with try block and accept block try block risky code i'm placing if exception occurred in this try block then accept block i'm using then i'm trying to write here something went wrong but if you write like this something went wrong every time in this accept block then uh, every time we are not able to show the proper exception message right so we are saying only something went wrong but whatever the problem occurred in this program we are showing something went wrong always only we are not able to show the proper exception message right so that's the reason let's see this what's it can be handled exception no problem now you can see the moment when i give that age is 87 something went wrong is there that means accept block is handling the exception the moment when i give this age is below 16 again something went wrong is there when we entered the proper age now you can see correct only here you are eligible to take policy so we are unable to display a proper exception message in this case yes we are using this accept block this is called default accept block default accept block only we are using default accept block means accept block without any exception class it shows only the user defined message but i have already messages clearly according to user values okay so these messages i have to send them to the user to handle this we have to use accept block with exception class that is called specific accept block so accept block is there what are the exception classes are there two young exception two old exception is there multiple exceptions so let's include two young exception two old exception two young exception both are there as message i'm giving this message only i'm going to print here so then we are using this accept block with clear exception classes to old exception to young exception as message and print message we are using so automatically this messages are coming now you can see this you enter your age your age is exceeding like above 60 then now we can see age should not be 60 or more okay so this is our own message what we have done in our what we can say program and if i try to enter some ages below in age should not be 16 or below here so this is properly we are handling then proper exception message also is returning because these two exceptions are exception classes so that classes through we are getting response if i give correct age only suppose we got this message you are eligible to take policy fine yes but notice this point so you have created your own exceptions two exception classes that exceptions we have injected into your program according to your requirement we have handled very well fine but 
other than these two user defined exceptions if there is a chance to get any other exception yes there may be chance okay sir there may be chance to get any other exception also other exception means what suppose if user entered invalid entries like for example i am asking age but user is trying to give some characters and he is trying to give characters now you can see abc so we got that other exception which is built-in exception class it is look at this is it built-in exception class or not yes so this is value error invalid literal for int with the base 10 abc like this this is invalid literal value here so this is base 10 only this is built-in exception sir so how we can handle this also again we can use multiple classes either it is you can see this difference between our own exception classes and system defined exception class system defined exception class color combination is different user defined exceptions or color combinations are different so ultimately in one except block we can include multiple exception classes okay so now this time it can handle every exception clearly so if user is entered some invalid entries so invalid literal for int with base 10 user is entered age is suppose like 76 above 60 age should not be 60 or more if user is entered age is below 16 age should not be 16 or below if user is entered proper age then you are eligible to take policy so this is the way to handle the exception with our own classes but sir we have created multiple exception classes including this so instead of including all these multiple exceptions can we go for super class better yes we can do it so instead of multiple exception classes including here so directly we can use super class super class can handle all the exceptions once the moment when we create our own exceptions here this exceptions also called as child classes of this super class so that's what once we use this super class under this super class our own exception classes also available that can be managed by super class well now we are trying to enter ages below 16 we got this exception message above 16 we got this exception message handling then we are getting some invalid inputs also handling perfect if you entered some correct values you are eligible to take policy like this correct okay. this is about what actually so user defined exceptions how to create and how to raise how to handle them clearly so this is about total exception handling mechanism here next i am going to start with a new topic in python that is called file handling in python file handling mechanism so file handling is very important in general everywhere okay so file handling means generally files are used to store the data okay so why we need to store the data i will tell you suppose there are two types of storage areas are there okay one is so uh, what we can say temporary storage and permanent storage first we are talking about storage areas storage areas storage areas means why storage areas are required because to store our data for further possibility access only further access purpose we use insert method why insert method insert method is not there in it is a constructor man that is in it is a constructor method this is constructor the moment whenever exception raised automatically constructor will be initialized that message will return no insert now storage areas storage areas means we can store the data permanently for further usage generally there are two types of storage areas are there one is temporary storage area temporary storage area temporary storage areas 
and next one is permanent storage areas permanent storage areas permanent storage areas temporary storage areas and permanent storage areas are there okay so temporary storage areas are python objects python objects like list couple set okay dictionary like this these are all temporary storage areas why sir we can call it as this list tuple set dictionary or temporary storage areas because the moment when we create a list with a lot of values that stores the data temporarily not permanently let's see let's show that suppose we are taking list example here so let's see this okay i'm taking just l1 now here l equals to list 10 20 30 40 in this program i'm storing what 10 20 30 values 30 40 values into list but how long this data will be represent only whenever we are executing this file one dot py this data is going to be displayed once if you go through other program execution automatically this data will be loose means it will be deleted so this is what we can say temporary storage area temporary storage area means python objects like list tuple set dictionary and so on so as long as when we execute the program then python data structures will store the data once you exit from the program that data structures don't store the data permanently again whenever you re-execute your program then it will create uh, storage again so this is permanent storage areas like sorry temporary storage areas permanent storage areas means what files files permanent storage or databases database files or database so files is permanent storage area once we store the data into files then automatically it will be create a file and stored in our project location or system location okay these <coughs> files data available until you delete or drop them so you can able to access any time this files data into your project for your own requirement purpose but compared to file storage area database storage area is the better option in real time but both are useful so all the time user cannot store the data into database no but because every time whenever he wants to collect the data again he has to establish the connection to the database he should bring the data from database but all the things may not be possible every time for connecting to the database so that's what user flexibility point of view so within your project if you want to store the data then store the data into files from that files only we can able to retrieve it is okay but most of the cases in real time live projects mostly recommend to use to store the data into database we have in upcoming session database storage area also don't worry i will show you how to send the data from our python logic to mysql database and sql server database i have to read and write and we will connect with the database also database programming purpose we use another tech right now we are using file storing only okay ah instead of init method whenever you you go for uh, any other method you should call that method okay but uh, init method automatically will call whenever we create object exception is a class no class related constructor is there that's what we have to use init only not other method now now coming to this files files are used to store the data permanently into your system location or your project location so files are useful whenever you want to retrieve or you want to reuse the data from the files we can able to collect the data from files and use into your application only so this is permanent storage area so that is the concept called file handling if you want to handle the data with file that is called file handling so let's see this there are generally two types of files are there 
we'll talk about uh, types of files but lot of files also there but i am going to show you first two types of files later we will do that okay so even we will work with csv files binary files text files okay and lot of file concept is there so first we'll talk about text files only text files and generally only binary files are there csv files also there comma separated values at last i will tell you csv files also generally text files are used to store character data text files are used to store what actually character data character data only character data and the text file is having an extension called dot txt is there dot txt is the extension of text file only text files are used to store character data and these text files are having an extension called dot txt only and binary files are used to store binary data binary files are used to store what data actually binary data like images audio and video files like this these files are having different extensions not a problem okay different extensions are there images audio and video sir okay first we'll see this text file handling here so, but in python programming if you want to create a file we need to follow some syntax okay what is the syntax i'll show you so generally files are used to perform operations files are used to perform the operations perform the operations like read and write so read means what we can read to the data from file write means we can store the data into the file so read is nothing but what input whatever we are giving that write means input and read means what output what we are going to get this values from the file only so input and output operations we can perform using file we can retrieve the data from the file and we can store the data into file by using write method and read method but to create file in python so this is the syntax actually to create a file how to create a file there is a built-in method is there to create a file in python so let's in let's give the syntax here first syntax syntax to create a file first we have to use file object name equals to there is a built-in method called open method this method can be used to create a file sir and here we have to give this file name dot txt we are working with file and here you can see file mode also we can give this file mode what type of code you are going to use example i am taking file object name is f is there you can take it any object open is a built-in method again file name is for example i am taking <coughs> excuse me sample.txt file mode i am giving w so w means what actually write mode i'll explain all the modes of the files also clearly so file object name equals to open method file name.txt is a name of the file with the .txt extension and mode of the file in which mode you are trying to create a file that is we have to mention f is by file object name equals to open is a method name sample dot txt is what actually file name w is the mode of the file only what is this mode w is the mode file mode and after completion of operations from the file like reading and writing so we recommend to close the file okay so to close a file this syntax is required as simple the syntax is file object name dot what actually close method you have to use example f dot close simple after completion of your file operations we recommend to close the file clearly <laughs> but what are the modes are available sir here so there are different file modes are there i'll explain that file modes clearly w mode is there this is for write operation r mode is there 
is for read operation a mode is there this is for append operation <clears throat> append means adding the data to the file keep on append a for append w plus is the x is there exclusive creation mode for file operation write operation exclusive <coughs> exclusive creation for write operation only this is okay. then <coughs> w plus is there this is write and read r plus is there this is read and write first read and write a plus is there append and read append and after that we can read it sir append and read a plus so these are the file operations mode w means write operation r means read operation a means append operation x means exclusive creation for write operation w plus means we have to use write and read first we have to write the data into file and then after we can read it r plus means first we need to read the data from file and then after write it read and write it is a plus means append and read only so let's see this uh, all file modes how it will work i need to explain with clearly after that we will start programming part how to create a file so i have a documentation some description is there that's why i'm just opening that documentation now you can see here this is the doc sorry it's not about core it's advanced now i have to go for file handling mechanism <clears throat> 48 now so look at this here these are the file modes available sir okay so r means open an existing file for read operation r is nothing but what open an existing file for read operation in this read mode file pointer or cursor is going to be positioned at the beginning of the file only file pointer means like this okay cursor is going to blink now that is file pointer always file pointer is positioned at the beginning of the file only sir always in this read mode especially if the file is not exist whatever <clears throat> the file you mentioned for reading the data from there if file is not there your provided file obviously you will get file not found error exception only sir you have seen in the last session exception also file not found error is one of the exception class at that time we have to handle the exception again if file is not found then we have to handle the situation so required file is not available so this is the default mode this is r mode so read r means reading open an existing file for read operation the file pointer is positioned at the beginning of the file if the specified file does not exist then we will get file not found error this is the default mode w means what actually write mode open an existing file for write operation open an existing file for write operation so strictly remember for read operation file should be there if file not there you can't read it you will get file not found error exception for write operation file no need to be there already file no need to be there if the file already contains some data <coughs> then it will be overridden sir overridden means replace if the specified file is not already available for writing operation then this mode will create that file w mode will create automatically the file even the file is not available in the location okay so if file is there in that file we can able to write the data if file is not there then this w mode will create that file automatically we don't get any problem at the time of writing the data into file file need not to be there already 
If not there, this mode W mode will create automatically provided file with name. In the R mode only, file must be there. Okay. Now next A mode. A mode also file need not to be there. Automatically, this mode also will create a file with the name what we provided. But the difference between W mode and A mode in the sense in this W mode, how many number of times same program with same data if you execute every time <coughs> new data will not be added to the file it will be overwrite the data to the file but when it comes to a mode append mode so this is every time when we execute a program the data will be added to the file appended to the file extra data it will not override so open an existing file for append operation it won't override existing data if the specified file is not already available then this mode will create a new file also next r plus is there to read and write data into the file first it will read it and then write it the previous data in the file will not be deleted the file pointer is always at position at beginning of the file only in the read mode w plus means if you want to write and read first we have to write it and then after read it this is called w plus write and reading purpose we use w plus mode it will override existing data obviously a plus means what append and read first we can append the data and then after read the data from the file in the a plus it won't override the data automatically whenever we execute the code it's keep on adding an extra data only that is called append mode only a plus it is as i said that x mode is there what to open file in exclusive creation mode for write operation that means in this x mode write operation purpose only we are creating this mode but strictly remember in x mode whatever the name you provide the file name that should not be there already if it is there already it will give you file exist error what error file exist error it will give you so if the file already exists then we will get file exist error sir in this x mode only so if you are trying to create a file with x mode file name already should not be there a new file a instantly need to be create so these are the modes of the text files note also i have given all the above modes are applicable for text files if the above modes suffixed with letter b then these represent for what files actually binary files so rb read binary wb write binary ab append binary r plus b read and write binary w plus b write and read binary a plus b append and read binary xb means exclusive creation mode for by binary operation okay yes let's begin the program practical implementation so first let's try to create a simple file creation how to do it without storing any data but before going to create a file <coughs> i want to give some basic example file properties and methods file properties and what sir methods file properties and methods so what are the file properties and methods we'll see first property is name of the file this is name so this is written what actually name of the provided file name of the provided file sorry it will return name of the provided file next mode written mode of the file which mode you have created okay mode of the file next one is what actually writable writable is a method sir this is not a property it written always true or false only true or false means whether this file is really right right mode then it written true otherwise false writable method will return true or false if your file is created in writable mode it written true otherwise it written false i am saying next readable <clears throat> readable method also will return what actually true or false so if your file is really in read mode this method will return true otherwise it returns simply false 
next closed is there closed is a method it also will return what actually closed it is not a method its property it also will return what it true or false this will check whether your file is closed or not if your file is really closed it return true otherwise it returns simply false so let's see the example first example with this only after that we will see how to write the data into file so let's example so i recommend to create <coughs> file handling programs separately with every program i just recommend to create a new file only so that you will get clarity so that's what i started with my coding file1.py file2.py like this more files i am trying to add it here so let's create a file object here f equals to open is the method file name is i'm giving sample.txt it's my file name comma mode is w mode i'm using so here you can see but before that let's observe in your project folder in this python full stack 7am folder do you have any sample.txt file no sample.py file is there but not txt but i want to create a text file there is no sample.txt <coughs> now i'm printing here file name is <coughs> file name is f is file object dot name is a property print file mode is what mode it is obviously w mode only will return because i have mentioned w f dot what i can say mode <clears throat> next what actually file i want to check is file writable okay question mark who will tell whether it is writable or not f dot writable method it written true or false only sir next i want to check my file is file readable is file readable okay question mark then f dot what i am taking readable method next print <clears throat> is file closed i'm checking whether it is file is closed or not let's see this f dot closed is file closed means is this closed actually really no it's not closed but when it will close the moment when we close this file like this f dot close only after closing file gets closed but i am checking <coughs> after closing also here i am placing this one so line number six i am checking whether it is file is closed or not actually it's not closed sir that's what we get what uh, false only but after really closing the file here f dot close method we are applying no after that we are closing we are checking again it return to all. so this is the first program so how to uh, check the file properties name of the property and mode of the property methods writable and readable these methods will return to or false let's run this file one dot py and the moment when we run now you can see we got the result clearly <coughs> file name is sample.txt file mode is w mode only <clears throat> is this writable yes it's true because we have used write mode only is this readable false it's not readable mode now you can see closed no it's not closed so far but after close method finding like line number seven again is this closed yes true closed okay but sir where it is created this file <clears throat> sample.txt look at this in your in your project location sample.txt file is created this is text file there is no data present in this file only even if you want to uh, look this physical location of this file so physical location means where you saved your data so in python folder python full stack at 7 am and this is what actually sample.txt file is available sir. so you can find this sample.txt file somewhere let's show that this is sample.txt file we don't have any data here only okay yes so this is file creation and this file can store the data permanently until you delete this file and drop this file from your project only but sir we have just checked the file properties only but how to store the data into file so let's see this to store the data into file 
to write writing data into file writing the data into a file sir. how to write the data into a file if to write the data into file we use two methods first method is write method okay next method is write lines method write lines method write lines method it is used to write a character data and write line method is used to write list of lines means list data we can write into the file then we can use write lines method and normal character data or string data if you want to write then we use write method to write string data okay then we use write method to write list of lines into the file then we use write line method let's see this how we can write that but in this writing process file name no need to be there if file name is there it's okay in that file it will write if file name is not there then it will create automatically new file as i said no it will create a new file. let's see this how we can use this okay now let's go to here new file creating file 2 in this file i am creating file object f open i am creating new file only if you want you can use same file also sample.txt otherwise new file also it will get abc.txt i am creating mode is w mode and i want to write the data into this file by using write method i can say hello as n i am using because of <clears throat> every line i want to display into line by line slash n means new line here f dot write hello it's about like this <clears throat> F dot right now you can see I'm using <clears throat> this is always so this data I'm writing to the files are here yeah MySQL and SQL server also we have to cover obviously because that is database connection that under comes into PyODBC concept <clears throat> python database connectivity PyODBC concept is there okay after files we will discuss that only yeah so we are writing the data right now hello hyderabad welcome and one by one line using write method so after writing successfully i can say that so data return to the file data return to the file sir but after completion of data return to the file we recommend to close the file we are closing the file only so abc.txt is a file name w is the mode of the file write mode we are writing the data by using write method only so this write method through we are written data to the file but look at this do you have abc.txt file already in my project no so w mode will check this file if it is there it's okay it will store the data within that if not there what will happen it this mode only will create a new file that is abc.txt look at this right click on it and run this now data return to the file abc.txt is automatically created the data also available here only in this project okay so this is but look at this the moment when i run this again and again second time i am executing file2.py third time i am executing file2.py fourth time also i am executing file2.py but look at this in this abc.txt that many times data is there no only one time because in w mode how many times you are executing no matter it will override the data override means adding but sir if you go for append means it's how many times you are keep on executing that many times it's going to be store the data here i'll show you that append also okay so to show the appending the data to the file i am creating new program again file 3 now f equals to open method i'm right now i'm using this sample.txt only sir because existing file only i'm selecting the reason is sample.txt file don't have any data right now let's write the data into this even you can also use new file also append mode also will create a new file if the file name is not there in case if you mention this file is available already then this append mode will store the data into that file so simple data i'm using here welcome to 
दुर्गा सॉफ्ट आई एम राइटिंग हियर स्लैश एंड आई एम गिविंग एंड नाउ यू कैन सी प्रिंट डेटा रिटर्न टू द फाइल एंड आई शुड गो फॉर क्लोज मेथड राइट नाउ यू कैन सी हियर Welcome to Durga Soft. So this file three dot py program I am executing with what mode? Append mode. Append means adding. The moment when I try to run this, the sample dot txt initially there is no data available in sample dot txt. Look at this sample dot txt file we have one time. But next time whenever we execute this file three dot py append method, no. Next time also added. One more time also added. Like this, how many number of times we are executing? It's keep on appending the data to the file sample dot txt. Four times are executed. Four times are added here. Yes, we can save the data into file. What is that? How to create a file? Creating the file, you can go to this file location like this D drive slash like this. It will save into D D drive. Okay, that's not a matter. I'll show you that. Yes, yes, yes. We can able to use this. I'll show you file path location how to do is in the next session. Okay, no worries. It's a simple actually. We are using directly name. It redirect automatically current to project. If we go to location, then that location only it will store the data into file. So this is append mode. Append means keep on adding the data. Okay, keep on adding the data. How many number of times you are executing? That many times it's added to the uh, data to the file only. But in the W mode. It's not happen, sir. How many number of times you are executing in W mode? That many times add. It's not added to the file. Only overwrite the data here. So this is appending and adding with what mode? Write mode only. Using this write method, we can write the data into file normal text data. But what about write lines? Means this write lines method is used to write list of lines into the file only. Let's see this write lines how it will work. List of lines. List data we can write. The list data we can store into file. Then at that time we can use write line. So let's see this Python file I'm taking. File four I'm using. Now f equals to open and a b c d dot txt file I'm using. And now I'm taking what mode? W mode only. But I have list data here with me. So list data is there. Few list names are there like Sai, Mohan, Durga, and then Raj. Like this, these are the list data completely. This list data I want to return to the file. F dot write lines of what L only print list data list data return to the file list data return to the file. Then F dot what close method. So we are having list object with all values. This list data I would like to store into file object f. That's what we are using. What methods are write line methods? Input is coming from list only. This list data return to the file only clearly. So let's see this list data is return to the file. And where is the file name? Abc dot txt. We can also see this abcd dot txt. This is completely list data. We have stored the data into file only. So this is about file creation and uh, file creation with a mode and w mode and exclusive creation mode also there. That we'll discuss in tomorrow and also how to retrieve the data from file also we'll see in tomorrow session. We'll continue this. Text files, binary files, CSV files, pickling, unpickling. Okay, database. Storage files all under comes into file handling mechanism. So that's all for today. So we'll continue tomorrow from here onwards. How many days to complete Python means I don't number of days, but still takes minimum. Two weeks, I think so.